So look, people don't know our our backstory. Oh boy, we got we got big backstories. So I'm just gonna go brief. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what I mean we're a few minutes behind, but it's all good because okay. you know we got we got time, man. This is this is this is this is the this is the powwow for the family. I know people okay. are checking in on the um on the thing. So uh, yes. So 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 look. Um, this is what it was. I met you on MySpace. Oh boy. Which is <laughs> MySpace sound like Black Planet these days. I know, right? It says a lot. So yeah. I, so you know, we we connected on that, but it was on some more like, yo man, let's link up and figure out how we could do some work together. This was back in 2007, yes. 2006. So, you know, I was telling them yeah. at the end of the day how you know, you came down to Happily Natural Day. You know what I'm saying? And then we ended up starting doing Happily Natural Day in Atlanta. Sure and I, I, I was very explicit to, to let people know that that Atlantis energy was catalytic for me. Man, and listen, it was, it was a, and yeah, you're right. It was 2006. And I think that year it was um, Dead Prez, the Air Likes, um, and a whole lot of other people. We came with with our young FTP squad. You know what I mean? And it was it was real dope. Um, it's funny. I was talking to uh, Victorious, who was uh, down there. We just interviewed him. Shout out to him. He has the new film, Yusef Hawkins, yep. Storm Over Brooklyn, playing on HBO right now. Right. You know, but, um, I, didn't see that. I was like, shit. He did the Weldon Irvin movie. Yes. And turned around and got this Yusef Hawkins joint. Yes. Yes. That's what we do. That's that's our weight class. You know what I mean? That's how we do this thing. You know what I mean? We don't, we don't um, you know, like like your man said, we don't die, we multiply. So it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. So 2006 was dope. Bringing it to an, to Atlanta in 2009, which was like three years later. You know, we had some of the the, the we had heavyweights all, all through this thing, man. You know what I mean? So I wanted to salute you. I think that uh, we talked earlier this year, and one of the things we talked about was just how young we both were. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Even though I'm like five days older than you. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, it was like you you was in your 20s. Right. You know what I mean? I was like early 30s. You know what I mean? And it was like, you know, it was it was a beautiful thing. You know, but we didn't realize at the time. Um, what a lot of people don't know is uh, we've done so much work uh, together with so many people that, that have been a part of this program. Um, so much monumental work and a lot we forgot that we did until someone yeah, comes along and be like, yo. It's, it's real that you say that because I'd be like, in a moment, be like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. For real. <laughs> if somebody remind me of some shit, I'd be like, yo, wait a minute. Man, it's panels people be talking about. I still don't know what they're talking about to this day. They swear I was on it. They said some things that sound like I might have would have said it, but I have no recollection. But um, I'm saying that not for uh, for bragging rights, but for fighting stripes. You know what I'm saying? I'm just letting y'all know that, you know, um, we got to get down and dirty out in this thing. You know what I mean? So it's a beautiful thing to have a happily natural because that takes us back to the whole concept of Black is Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? With the whole Alambe Braff movement and just that whole, you know, natural thing. It's, it's, it's necessary. You know, I remember uh, folks would, before they knew what it was, they were just thinking some type of hair modeling thing or whatever. And the same with the Locks Conference, you know, shout out to uh, uh, Mama, Mama Kosua, who, uh, who's now an ancestor, you know, doing a service over there. But, um, you know, the beauty of Happily Natural and the Locks Conference and all these different festivals is that you're gonna get some real revolutionary fervor. You know what I mean? It's not just gonna be the, the cultural side. And when I say the cultural side, I just mean the aesthetics, the dress, you know what I mean? How much, you know, water you drink, how many staffs you roll with, what kind of flip-flops and vegan lollipops you chew. It ain't about that. It's about us as a whole, you know what I mean? And it don't matter whether you say you came from a spaceship or the slave ship or we in the same ship, you know what I'm saying? And, and, it's, and it's sinking. So, um, you know, I'm grateful to be here. I'm honored to be here. You know what I mean? I want to... Um, start off by this this brother uh chad bozeman you know what i mean um you know that that was a uh, a serious blow 
And I say a serious blow because of the fact that he contributed something, even though, you know, some folks may say, you know, that was a non, that was a fictional character and this and that. Mm -hmm. What they did in that particular moment is they made it cool to be African again. You know what I'm saying? They made it cool to, to, to wear a daishiki. You know what I mean? So you have brothers and sisters in the hood that weren't thinking about no daishikis. You know what I mean? And then, you know, some people criticize, well, they wearing the Chinese ones and this and that, you know, they dealing yeah. with what they know. You meet them where you at. Right. You know what I'm saying? Meet them where they at, you know? But yeah, um, I'm hoping like right now what we're doing, I hope that opposed to me just doing a presentation and we have a conversation if that's cool. For sure. Yo, I'm totally with that. Like I'm over here trying to get this thing on Instagram real quick. Word, 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 word. So no, so no doubt. Um, what I wanted to do too is I think that, um, you know, um, I, I picked up this book again. Mm. The Wretched of the Earth by Frantz Fanon. It's one of my, my favorite books. Uh, to the folks who's checking this out, if, if you haven't read The Wretched of the Earth by Frantz Fanon, this is something that should be in your library, point blank period. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to do today is I want to do something that, that I never do, not sometimes do. Um, I want to read uh, a couple pages from The Wretched of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to... Uh, you know, before we get into it, because I kind of want to just uh, show that here it is, this brother's in Algiers back in 1963, you know what I'm saying, around the whole Algerian, Algerian revolution, you know what I'm saying. Um, another film you should check out, you know what I'm saying, uh, is uh, Battle of Algiers. Oh, yeah, word. So I'm giving you two, two jewels. These are two of my favorite uh pieces that that really helped to move and motivate me. So mm -hmm. Battle of Algiers, check that out and check out uh, The Wretched of the Earth. So The Wretched of the Earth, this was 1963 when he wrote this, you know what I mean? But I want y'all to just, you know, I want to read and, and, and y'all can bear with me, you know what I'm saying? I'm just getting hooked on phonics and everything. But um, <laughs> I'm going to read a little bit and uh, we can compare notes as to where we are right now and why. 1963 being about 57 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Why this is still relevant, all right? Go ahead. So this is uh, Wretched Earth, Frantz Fanon. Um, and this particular chapter is called Concerning Violence. It says, national liberation, national renaissance, the restoration of nationhood to the people. Whatever may be the headings used or the new formulas introduced, decolonization is always a violent phenomenon. At whatever level we study it, relationships between individuals, new names for sports clubs, the human admixture at cocktail parties, in the police, on the directing boards, or, the na or of, of national or private banks, decolonization is quite simply the replacing of a certain species of men by another species of men. Without any period of transition, there's a total, complete, and absolute substitution. It is true that we could equally well stress the rise of a new nation, the setting up of a new state, its diplomatic relations and its economic and political trends. But we have precisely chosen to speak of that, that kind of tabula rasa, which characterizes at the offset all decolonization. Mm -hmm. Its unusual importance is that it constitutes from the very first day, the minimum demands of the colonized to tell the truth the proof of success lies in a whole social structure being changed from the bottom up. The extraordinary importance of this change is that it is willed, called for, demanded. The need for this change exists in its crude state, impetus and compelling, in the consciousness and in the lives of the men and women who are colonized. But the possibility of this change is equally experienced in the form of a terrifying future in the consciousness of another species of men and women, the colonizers. Mm. Okay, so, um, and he goes on. Um, he goes on to talk about, you know, uh, you know, the relationship between the, the native and the settler. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The native being us, wherever we are. The settlers being them, wherever we are. You know what I'm saying? It talks about uh, how from the beginning, our relationship was marked in violence. You know what I mean? We always hear these stories about how they gave, you know, sold the, the uh, 
Manhattan for some beans with the natives. And, and you know, they went to uh, civilize the savages over on the continent and teach them how to, uh, to, to live and how to survive the land and all of this stuff, you know, which we know is bull. But, um, you know, he talks about, about that, that, that violent thing. But he also talks about how he moves on to say uh, decolonization, which sets out to change the order of the world, is obviously a program of complete disorder, but it cannot come as a result of magical practices, nor of a natural shock, nor of a, a friendly understanding. Decolonization as we know it is a historical process. That is to say that it cannot be understood, it cannot become uh, intelligible, nor clear to itself except an exact measure that we can discern the movements which give it historical form and context. Decolonization is the meeting of two forces opposed to each other by their very nature, which in fact is, is old to the situation on the colonies. The first encounter was marked with violence and, and their existence together. That is to say the exploitation of the native by the settlers was carried out by bayonets and cannons. Okay, so, um, One of the things that uh, that many of us are try attempting to do in this, this this time period in this era, and and forgive me if I was reading a lot because there's so much more that I really I'm I'm kind of excited about this because of the fact that where we are today, you know, it's the same shit, different toilet. You know what I mean? But uh, one of the things that's important is that uh, folks think that we're going to be able to vote our way out. We're gonna be able to pray our way out. We're gonna be able to uh, uh, shout our way out. We're gonna be able to march our way out, slogan our way out, you know what I mean? And on and on and on and on and on, right? And the reality of this thing is that any liberation that we've experienced here in America or around the world had to do with bloodshed. It had to do with bloodshed. It's unfortunate, we don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna uh, think about that part because of the fact that bloodshed means that um, you have to get physical. It's not cute. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They, they ain't gonna be looking at your tats. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean, they ain't gonna be like, yo, oh man, you know what I'm saying? He got this Amon Ra tat, tat on his uh, on his chest. I know he bought that life, you know what I'm saying? Or, or she got, you know, th this bone in her nose. You know what I'm saying? You know, she, she, she know all the, the Swahili terms. You ain't gonna win like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, he drink the best alkaline water, got a plant-based diet. You know what I'm saying? That's cool and it's necessary, but that ain't the totality of it. You know what I mean? You can vote for Biden, Kamala Harris. You can vote for uh, Bernie Sanders. Shit, you can vote for me if you want to. It ain't gonna change a goddamn thing in America. You understand what I'm saying? There's nothing that could be done because of the fact that even me with the total disdain, discomfort and disregard for this particular uh, empire, even I know full well that if I was a master chef and I know how to make all the finest cuisines and everybody know me and I got restaurants and everything and, and I just decide, you know what? I'm gonna open up a McDonald's franchise. You know what I'm saying? None of that matters. None of my skill set. I can't put no no uh, sauteed mushrooms on the Big Macs. You know what I mean? I can't throw no no daiquiri in the, in the, in the strawberry shakes. You know what I mean? I can't put, give you no great poupon. You know, it, it don't go like that. It don't work like that, Jack. Nah, it don't. It, it, it's designed to do what it's doing. You know what I'm saying? Now the ill thing about it, the ill thing about it is some of y'all will hate and want to hurt folks like me for busting that bubble. You understand what I'm saying? It's a hard truth. It's painful. It, it, it makes you want to compromise because of the fact that at this stage in the game, you got this orange cat, you got Garfield in office, right? He terrorizing all the mice. Garfield running them up. He's just slapping these mice. He's cutting throats. He's sending them back to the borders. He's building wall, slapping cheese out their hand. Garfield gangster. He talking trash. He don't care. He talking about grabbing by the, all that. You know what I mean? His <laughs> wife naked. He don't care. I'm Garfield. I'm in office. 
So the mice are running around. They're like, man, you know, we got to get rid of Garfield, man. We hate Garfield. Garfield be tripping. We need somebody else. So they look over, they see a, a rusty mouse trap. And this rusty mouse trap, they looking at it, they like, man, that rusty mouse trap just sit there. You know, we know it murdered a whole lot of mice in the past. Man, it was chopping mice in half. You know, mice go to get that cheese, walk out, snap your neck off. But we rather have anything, anything or anybody other than Garfield. You know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, the rusty mouse trap, you know what I'm saying? The people who handle the rusty mouse trap, they get slipped. They say, hey, mice like cheese. Mice like that, that Gouda cheese. You know what I'm saying? Set it on top of that rusty mouse trap. And what do the people do? What do the mice do? Immediately run for that cheese and pock out. Neck snapped. You know what I'm saying? You know, we have to understand what we're dealing with right here. We can't fall for the cheese. Kamala Harris is the cheese. But she's in bed with the rusty ass mousetrap. Dan Cahoots. In fact, she was a mousetrap herself. You know, but y'all want to support her because of the fact that that uh she made it look cool. She made it look cute. She went to Howard. She went to, she went to HBCU. Right, right, right. What you talking about? Are you tripping on Kamala for? So what she railroaded niggas all throughout her career. Mm -hmm. So what she know for a fact that folks on death row and there's evidence in her office look the other way. Mm -hmm. So what did they saw? She saw cases, she oversaw cases where she saw that these people were were innocent. And she said F them. She was talking about locking up parents if their kids was missing school for truancy. And I saw a video with her actually laughing about it in front of these crackers. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And now, now a black woman or a black man in America will want to get with you. If you say that you ain't, well, if you don't vote, you just mean you, you want Trump. The thing I love about Trump is he is a great example of white supremacy. He's a great example of how white America really deals with us and how they look with us and how they think. He just too dumb to hold it in. Joe Biden, he dumb too, but he know to keep his game face for a while. I'm saying, right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he know to keep his game face for a while, but he knew that he had to go get a bed winch. Mm -hmm. He knew he had to go get a bed winch. Now, mm -hmm. some of y'all like, man, you call the sister a bed winch. You call, look, man, what, what am I supposed to call her, a queen? What am I supposed to call her, empress? You know what I'm saying? Because she's a woman, a police, a, a, a black police that's a woman. She ain't gonna shoot you because she a woman. Mm. She ain't gonna lock your ass up because she a woman. Are you serious? Are you serious? They said blue lives matter. She back in the blue. You talking about she black. I live in Atlanta. We live in Atlanta, Georgia. Where's our comrade Deruba would say, where the slaves run the plantation. We got a black mayor. We had black mayors here for over 40 years. Black police chiefs, all that. That don't mean jack shit. That don't mean nothing because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they don't see us as equals. We have a black mayor that got on TV with a couple black rappers crying, talking about go home when they burning things. This this ain't the Atlanta we know. Po T I said this was the this was Wakanda. Excuse me. This is Wakanda. That's what T I said. You know. Listen. So we gotta we gotta be we gotta be clear, like, you know what I mean? Somebody said, hey, man, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, like right wing, left wing, they're both wings of the same bird. Right. You know and, and so I think what's trippy in this moment is that people get it twisted. It's like, you know what I mean? Oh, if I go this way, 
it's going to be less pain. That way it's going to be more pain. As like what we've been talking about for all these years is that pain is pain. You know what I'm saying? No matter how you freak it, you dig? So how do we get how do we get free from the pain is, is, is the conversation that we need to be having. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, man, we, we're, we're in, um, we're in the, the, the age of, of uh, the empire, but all empires fall, right? We, we, we're under the belief, you know, because our people are so afraid. Mm-hmm. They're, they're so afraid and, and rightfully so. Don't 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 get it twisted. Don't let me jump on here talking like I'm I'm Tony T- tough guy or something like that. I'm just saying my particular position. For those who don't know, because of the fact that it's, it's easy for you to think that you have somebody pegged. It's easy for you to look at a cat and you say, "Well, you know what I'm saying? He think he this. So he th- I don't think I'm shit. I just think I'm a, a black man who has the right to live." I got the right to feed my family, the right to raise my family, the right to exist on this planet with, with, with my comrades, with, with other human beings, and to be treated like a human being. It's a damn shame that here we are, we, we're on this planet for such a short amount of time, and you have individuals who want to run everything, including you. We have ancestors who who never knew freedom. Not that we know freedom, but I'm talking about who were on the plantation from sunup to sundown. You have brothers and sisters who were born and died on the plantation. Many of them in the fields. You have brothers and sisters who died on these ships, on these packed ships. I hear folks talking about they ain't got no air conditioning. Imagine what those slave ships was like. Imagine how hot it is in that summertime ferry boat ride. You know what I'm saying? With all of those bodies in it, in the holes of those ships. We couldn't even imagine. We not even we we couldn't even begin to imagine because of the fact that we have became so we become so uh We've embraced our colonizers culture. And we embraced our colonizers definition of comfort. We've embraced our colonizers definition of love, definition of of pain. You know what I'm saying? They tell us how to suffer. They tell us how to respond, how to respond to our suffering. Some bold motherfuckers, man. You got a lot of gall. I mean, you. I can't even cry the way I want to. I can't. I can't. I can't protest the way I want to protest. Man, listen. It, it always kills me when I get brothers and sisters that want to organize, and they call me and they ask me how do they get a permit, and I'm like, a permit for what? <laughs> uh, we we want to hold a protest over such and such. Your protest is the permit, right? You saying I'm absolutely positively displeased. We not did so many protests throughout my life, man. I ain't never got a permit. I ain't never sought a permit. I don't give a damn where it was at. We protested. You know what I'm saying? Police station, UN, you the, the UN, wherever. What you got? What, what you got? Yeah, because 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 we we we're telling you that we're displeased, but they tell you how to suffer. Like Malcolm said, it's like the Novocaine, suffer peacefully. Mm-hmm. You had Nick Cannon, black folks in this age of 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 excitement, they're, they're looking at this thing like, wow, you know, here we are, you know, we rebelling. You had a cat like Nick Cannon, he got in there and he started talking about these rotten ass Jews. He started talking about the, the criminal settler state. He started talking about, um, you know, the, 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 the Zionists right. and everybody was pumped up. That was at, at, at noon, at lunchtime. Man, everybody was riled up, boy. I was getting so many calls and texts and shout out to Nick Cannon. That's right, brother. Such, 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 such. Threw Griff under the bus. He just threw Griff. I mean, he picked Griff up and rolled him under there. Yeah. They backed up over Griff. 
backed up. That, 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 that was a noon time. Everybody was celebrating. By dinner time, he flipped. <laughs> oh, man, I ain't mean to say that. He's sitting down with a rabbi. You know what I'm saying? He bring the rabbi in his show. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? That Called Griff Richard Griffin. I don't. I don't even know how Richard Griffin got to my studio. I mean, <laughs> just snap. Same thing with the NBA and the tennis players. They was hot. They like, oh shit, yo, they they ain't playing. They said they gonna be on strike. All the playoffs, all that shit. Man, listen. That ain't even last four hours. Man, shit. They they Nick Cannon. They got <laughs> Nick Cannon. <laughs> White folks call LeBron them in there. They talking about they had Barack talk to him. First they said Michael Jordan crying ass came through there. He crying. You know what I'm saying? Then they he go, he said he consulted Barack, another fucking war criminal. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, you know, are oh, we just gonna play the games out? What you mean? The girl, the little black girl with the tennis joint, Osaka, whatever her name is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Same thing. She's like, I'm not gonna play either. She the white folks are like, look. Don't y'all know how many niggas we got that can dribble balls and throw goddamn bats and shit? You don't get your black ass back on this court. You, 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 want, you want to be working with Nick Cannon? All of them back dribbling. And what do we get? Symbolisms. Black Lives Matter shirts. And here it is, you know, don't get it twisted. Any show of resistance is a show of resistance, right? But we're not going to be satisfied because you got a Black Lives Matter shirt on. I'm not going to be satisfied because my white ass neighbor has a Black Lives Matter sign. You know what I'm saying? That shit is not, that's not, that's trinkets. That's not victory. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be sidetracked by the slave. Right. You're not going to have the sidetracking of the slave, rather. You know, so this is what we're dealing with. This is the world we live in. But what France Fanon was saying is that you have to, you're going to have to get busy. Right. right. Now, for, for the listener, I ain't, you know, I know some of y'all are some pure haters. I'm just say that some of y'all are just some straight haters and I, I'm, I'm not i'm not talking to the folks who, who i don't know and innocent and you know what i'm saying that we just no. some of our people are straight haters they be on straight bullshit not hating me you hating the fact that we have to do something this ain't got nothing to do with me this is before me and it's gonna be after me you know what i'm saying this particular demand for you to be involved in your people's liberation struggle it's not a request. It's not a suggestion. It's what's going to constitute whether you and your future will exist. This is what's going to be the deciding factor on how much your children and your children's children will have to suffer. This is what this is. I don't care about you like me. Give a fuck about that. What that mean? Hell, I don't like me sometimes. That, that's not even, that's irrelevant. What does your future look like? What does the future of our race look like? Imagine if the Honorable Marcus Mosaic Garvey, Edward Blyden, you know what I'm saying? Imagine if 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 these brothers weren't doing what they're doing. Imagine if if if, if Harriet said, you know, I ain't gonna run because you know my husband don't want to go, right. or my father don't want to go, or my mama don't want to go. When you are charged with this task. It's like you work for the U.S. Post Office before Trump. You have to deliver. You got to deliver. They don't give a fuck. You talking about, it was raining, so I, I went home. It was cold outside. No, oh, your ass got to deliver. When you talking about freedom fighting, you got to deliver or suffer the consequences. No, this ain't an opinion-based thing. This ain't about opinion. What peaceful revolution have you seen? Yeah. Chant um, down Babylon. Good. So what's trippy about it? The whole what what oh, actually is is you know tragic for me is that since the jump from 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 when 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 the protests first started jumping off, we were like, "Yo, watch these white boys, these white supremacists. It's gonna be coming out here with the AR-15." Mm -hmm. And they're gonna be busting off. They shoot at y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because you are yeah. open target. They want to spark. They want to spark. They want to spark. They want to spark the jump off. Like you yeah. said, um, you remember the you remember the Mob B song? Uh, uh, with uh, uh, you know, uh, where you said there's a war going on outside. No man, nobody's safe. Right. 
You can yeah, run, but you can't have forever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they like, yo, we ready for it. And so they came oh, yeah. through yeah. five months later. Well, even before that. Right. Like the most visible situation is the little 17 year old boy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who came through with the AR, blew somebody's head off. Yeah, shot two people. Shot yeah. three people. Killed shot two and two. shot somebody else in the arm. And, 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 and shot somebody and blew somebody's arm off. And so, yeah. you know, people would thought it was a game. I was like, yo, y'all out here yelling and screaming at these white folks yeah. about these statues and shit. Yeah. But these boys is ready for the, what they say they call it boogaloo. And I had, That's right. I said, yo, this little, the little boy, the lady was like, oh, well, they don't all hate black right. people. I said, well, I don't got time to try to figure out who's who. Right. It's like, <laughs> it's like a motherfucker talking about they dog don't bite. Fuck right. that me. I ain't got time to figure out who's who, Jack. How, how you know your dog don't bite? But for you got teeth, he told you, right, yo, y'all made a deal. Yo, I ain't gonna bite nobody. So you know what I'm saying? Anybody, just tell them when they see me and shit, because I'm a friendly dog. Just be like, yo, he don't bite nobody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then one day he decided to bite the shit out of him. I'm like, yo, I thought you said he's cool. And you know I'm a dog, man. That's sweet too. You know right. This is my this is my MO. Yeah, right? sir. But but so, these white these white boys you talking about, right? And, and see the thing is, people keep talking about these militias like they ain't always been here. Right, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like this is this is not a new phenomenon. Like, this yeah, is they're, they're called police. Years and years and, and decades of people training. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, well, we, and a lot of a lot of them on police department and, and, and CO COs. You know what I'm saying? And that's why they have these prisons so far away from the cities. They they have them in these little country ass areas, so these Aryans and everything can utilize our people as whatever they want to do. They can whoop them up. They can target practice. They can set it off on them, bust them up the whole nine. You know what I mean? And, and, and every now and then there's a prison revolt, just like on the plantation, you know, just like on the plantation. But see, the thing is, one of the things that Kwame Tori used to talk about, he said, uh, we're not outnumbered without, we're out organized. That's it. We're not outnumbered at all. If you think about it, the, the, the UK can fit inside the size of Texas, inside of Texas about five times. The UK is small, but you know what I'm saying? It, you, you, got the, you, got, you got the UK, you got, you got uh, uh, the US, you got Israel, all these small motherfuckers, bullies, terrorizing the rest of the world because nobody didn't put their foot in their ass. You understand what I'm saying? The only reason, and then you got Negroes that, that want to be cops. Down here, black cops terrorizing black people. Mm, 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 mm. You almost shit. Truth be told, if you're in the city of Atlanta, sometimes you might prefer a white cop pull your ass over. You might be like, go ahead on, man. <laughs> black cop, man, he shit. He want to check your cavities, do everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's off the chain. But that's because of the fact that you know, the conditioning of colonization is so such a powerful tool and such a powerful force that they will make you think or make those who are not grounded think that they can actually be a part of this system. They can actually participate. Right. You know, folks bragging, they're like, oh, man, Jay-Z a billionaire now. Great. Excellent. Don't don't know what it mean to me right. or us, right. but he's a billionaire. But also, Jeff Bezos just became the first motherfucker to be a two hundred billionaire. Two hundred. He has two hundred billion dollars. Two hundred billion dollars. Right. Everybody on the planet can be fed. That's one man. Right. Not his company's worth. How is that legal? Right. How is that not a criminal attack? There's, there has to be a, a ceiling on how high you can go. Right. Right. As long as people are starving. Right. That's what I'm saying. But that's the thing. That's the way capitalism tricks you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, capitalism, the way capitalism exists, it overlays within you this idea of meritocracy that you yes. can somehow earn your way to the top. Yeah, And, you know, the reality is that these people are so far disconnected 
from where we where where people where poor people are. Yes. And they, the, the only reason why they even had that much is because of the exploitation mm-hmm. that they do. Yes. And so we we so we're tricked into thinking that we can earn our way up the ladder. But the reality is the only way you get up the ladder is by exploiting other people that are on your level or the below. The only way. The only, the only way. way. It's, it's a pimp whole system. And in fact, we can't even be pimps. Because the biggest, the, the, the most powerful black motherfucker you can find in America still got an answer to these crackers. You understand what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck what your name is. Oprah, Hova. You got an answer to them. You know what I mean? You ain't about to build shit. You ain't about to open no Oprah City. You ain't about to have no distribution. You ain't about to have no serious manufacturing. None of that. But you can look the part and we'll give you certain trinkets. We'll invite you to the White House, but you're going to do what we say. Your job, once you cross certain a certain ceiling, you belong to us. Mm-hmm. You belong to us. And if you try to get out of line, we'll strip your ass down. We'll lock your ass up. We'll make you look crazy. You know what I'm saying? In fact, you already be crazy because that quest towards that particular lifestyle and that particular dynamic makes you insane out the gate. Out the gate. What kind of man are you that you want to have more than your brother or sister? What kind of man are you that you want to own other people? Who are you? What kind of oppressive motherfucker are you that you think you can own another human being and sell them? And I'm not talking about back during the slave trade. I'm talking about right now. I'm right now. I'm talking about right now. You know, so when I see these folks in the street burning this shit up, I get so many people like, man, you know, what, what can we? I've been doing a lot of panels and discussions lately, man. And one of the questions that comes up every time is some wild shit. And I, I know they have to be white or they have to be, you know what I'm saying, uh, a non person of color, quote unquote. Because the, uh, the question is always, you know, how can we do this peacefully? How can we have a non violent this and a non violent that? Shit, King tried that. Y'all bust him in his melon. <laughs> it was as peaceful as it come. Right. Shot this man down. Right. Shot him down. Gunned him down. We tried it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you kill King, you kill any goddamn body. Right. I don't stand a chance. You know what I'm saying? So the reality is, um, you know, we're, we're going to, um, we have to move beyond the sloganeering. We got to move beyond the fashionable militancy and the empty rhetoric. Like you said a little while ago, yeah, you have these militias out here. They serious. I'm in the state of Georgia. You know what I'm saying? You you in Richmond. This is this the, the heart of the Confederacy. You know what I'm saying? This, this See, the thing is, they remind you here in Atlanta. You get pulled over by some of these cops in certain areas. They tell you, you ain't in Atlanta no more, boy. You in Georgia. Mm. You're not in Atlanta. You in Georgia. And they mean that. And they mean that. They bout that shit. But we have to uh, we have to call some of these folks to task. You know, you have these clowns who've been running around for years. Everybody want to be super militant, super hardcore, whatever, so on and so forth. Where y'all at defending the streets at? And when I say y'all, I'm not I'm not the dude that's that's on some little, you know, why somebody else, why somebody ain't doing that. This what you say you do. Right. I'm just saying, do what you say you do. It ain't got nothing to do with me. This ain't personal because I don't like you because you got an ashy ass, dusty black uniform on and you run around screaming black power and you powerless and shit like that. Or you a nigga talking about you sovereign and you homeless. I ain't got nothing to do with none of that. What are we doing? Yeah, at the, the bottom line, you got you got these cats, Stone Mountain, Georgia. What's the, the not fucking around crew? Whatever the hell it's called. Coalition, whatever the hell. This clown used to be a DJ recently. He was yelling, he was at a Black Lives Matter rally with some white folks, took his Black Lives Matter joint off, started talking about all lives matter. Police, white folks clapping the whole now. Now he he tackled Max. Now he the baddest motherfucker on the block. A few, few months later, a few years later, 
marching up to 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 uh Stone Mountain, marching out in in in, in Kentucky, in Louisville, talking about Brianna, Brianna Taylor. All, all that sound good. They shooting themselves, literally. <laughs> I seen that. I was like, yeah, crazy. What kind of Keystone Cop shit like, is this? Gotta be a, this gotta be some sort of comedic movie, man. Like, what, yeah. Like, what's going on? This gotta be some sort of. Like, yeah, you know I mean, like, this can't be real. Like, what's going on? Like, yeah, but but what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to get to a point where there's gonna be accountability because of the fact that, see, the thing is, you're playing with our lives. And I, I let the record reflect. I don't know that brother. I ain't hating on that brother. I'm just saying, stop playing. Stop playing, because these crackers, they not playing. But see, that's the thing. I think that, you know, my my, my challenge or the, what's challenging the most for me is that every cycle of uh, Black murder by police sparks a new set of... Uh, Crazies. Of, yeah, of, of of people jumping off the porch to act to be active in community. Right. But there's no coordination. So the right. limited coordination from those those folks, you know, it's it's like Kwame Ture taught us mm -hmm. the difference between mobilization and organization. That's right. That's right. We unconsciously will mobilize all like day. The moment out of rage, anger, you know what I'm saying, sadness. We yes. will mobilize and we will march know, on Washington. Yeah, we will instinctually yeah. go run up on, you know, the police department and burn fire to whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's that's this. But, but that's new though. Yeah, yeah, remember that's the new part. The, the burning of the police stations and all that. Remember that ain't that that's that's this year. Oh yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, don't 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 don't. Don't, don't get seen now. Don't try to act like it's been right. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the new stuff. But I'm talking about yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the act of marching and, and I'm saying and like getting up, everybody just mo get together and just yell and be angry about the shit. Right, right. And do, and do a march. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 our instinct. But as far as organizing for protracted struggle, right. struggle, yes, longitudinal. You know what I'm saying? Direct action is that's not our instinct. You know what I'm saying? Know. That that's but that's but that but that's the ch that's the challenge for us in these moments. And what I experienced was that you know I'm some I'm you know be honest yo Kalani you think people think you're an asshole I'm an asshole like I don't you bullshit know, I'm sometimes uh, I'm well, like you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, sometimes I'm very sarcastic <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying. And also, I'm like, yo, y'all should study. If you're going to jump out here with all this shit, if you ain't study, mm -hmm. then what the fuck is you doing, right? So that's Be my right. kind of angle. But my thing is this. When all this shit pops off and the list of demands looks like defunding the police. Right. Or, you know what I mean? You want to get somebody fired right. or some shit. I'm like, yo, man, we at war <clears throat> with white supremacy. Like, right. how in the hell does defunding the police equate to black liberation? That doesn't. Right. Not to me. Not to me. I mean, come on. You could take all the money from the police department and they'll just privatize the bitch. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that if George Zimmerman wasn't a police officer. The guys that killed Ahmaud Arbery, yeah. Yusuf Hawkins, police Same officers, thing. they yeah. were private citizens that ran up on that and, you know what I mean, had the thing on them. So we got to like, okay, well, what are we really fighting for? And I, I see these people jumping up and my city was a lot of white folk. Yeah. And it's I like that all over the place. Yeah. So, I, I mean, you know, I don't expect white folks to know. You know what I'm saying? I, I I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this though on on the whole the, the white folk thing. Sorry, sorry for cutting you, man. Um, but I don't. Um, you know, some of these white folks are sincere forces. Yeah, folks like Marilyn Buck, um, who could have skated 
on the charges, uh, if you deterred Dr. Matuta Shakur and, and, and some of these other brothers and sisters in, you know what I'm saying, say cool folks like that. Mm -hmm. But she decided that she wasn't going wasn't going to rap. And she took that 75 year hit. Mm. Now I don't know too many black folks nah. that they got a choice to skate. Not many. And they're gonna choose to take 75 and be like, well, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and ride for manifest. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these cats that tell tell the police where you live, what kind of car you driving, who you was with, where you was last seen, what what kind of lunch you like to eat, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? So so we clear about that. So when it comes to like a lot of these white folks in the street, our position have always been, you know what I'm saying? Um, you come around, but you don't run shit. Now, when I say you can come around, you come around to certain spaces. If you out there organizing in the street, look, yeah, you damn right. We need some allies. We need, we need, we need whoever want to be cannon fodder against the state. You know what I'm saying? But we got to be clear. It's like, because what happens is black folks get so comfortable that they look for white, look to white folks for leadership. This is the first time in our people's movement that white folks have taken the forefront. Mm. Usually whenever we were out there organizing in the street, we were in control and the white folks did what the hell we told them to do. Now, if there's any white folks every now and then somebody try to break some shit or walk, some of that type of stuff. If we were in certain places, they weren't breaking shit. Like, look, this family's right here. We don't need this family on the news, this lady, mother, whatever. You know what I mean? Talking about she ripped something in half. Do that shit when we ain't here. Now, white folks just running the muck and black folks running behind them. Now it's confusing because you see anarchists rolling up on, uh, clashing with some of these, uh, uh, anarchists clashing with some of these uh, 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 militias. Right. So if you don't know no better, you don't know which white boy is which. <laughs> right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you'll be distracted because of the fact that traditionally, those of us who don't really rock with them like that, you look at it like, well, you know, I don't trust them white folks. They're probably police. Shit. Look at William O'Neill. Yeah, he was police hard as hell. He was right. black as they come. Worked right with the police. Mm -hmm. Set Chairman Fred up. Had him took out for $300. Mm -hmm. $300 check. Got Chairman Fred assassinated. You know what I mean? So we got to be clear. It's like we, we can't just get caught up on uh, looking at the differences in the troops. Indeed, make sure that you have your cadre and you have your folks. But any action against whatever you got a problem with, you welcome it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to go to dinner. You ain't got to hang out. You ain't got to be buddies. You ain't got to know each other's name. But if the police is, is mashing me out and they trying to take me out and the white boy come knock him out, I ain't gonna be like, get out of there, cracker. You not, you not, I was about to fight him. Right. Huh? Knock him out. Yeah. So we, we get we get caught up in narrow nationalism. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the problem is we are uh again, we scream in black power, but we're powerless. Mm -hmm. We're powerless. And we look for everybody else to speak for us and everybody else to blame. Right. So when when an athlete or an entertainer get up saying some crazy shit, we mad at them. Right. You have the opportunity to stand up and say some shit yourself. Mm. Some of y'all won't even post on Facebook. Mm. So let alone speak for somebody. Right. You won't even hate it in your heart. You know, but um I, I give thanks for all of the brothers and sisters who um who are clear about where we are today. And even those who are not clear, I want to clarify that, you know, anyone that's making an effort, I salute you for making an effort. Mm -hmm. However, just because of the fact that you want to fly a plane, don't mean that you could just hop in a plane, turn it on and take off. You have to learn. You have to study. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's you got you, Yeah, you got to get with some pilots to know what they're doing. You got to set set the course. You got to figure things out. You just can't hop in there like, I just want to fly. Mm -hmm. That's how this movement is. In fact, this movement is more important than flying. So if you can't do that with an aircraft, you damn sure can't do it with our people's lives. You can't just go out there on the job training. Some folks just want to be on Facebook. Some people just want 
be on YouTube. This brother sent me this video uh, of an interview he did on at a radio station. And to this day, I'm trying to figure out, he was talking about, man, you're going to love this, brother. This is deep, such and such, blah, blah, blah. Man, I seen the video. I was confused. I'm still to this day. I don't even know. I don't know what he said. He's talking about 20 minutes. I don't know what he said because of the fact that he has no analysis. He don't know who our enemy is. He, he He's clueless. So he's saying all of these sound bites and, 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 and terms that he's heard, he's just mumbling them all, jumbling them all together. And, and it's not filling. It's like Chinese food. You know what I'm saying? It's like a microwave. You, you, you put, put some food in a microwave and you fuck around, go to the bathroom, you come back, it's cold. Right. Because the fact that it, it has no, it hasn't taken the time, it hasn't done what it had to do. When you get a cooked meal and you put that shit in the stove and you walk your ass to the bathroom, come back, you might be blowing for five, 10 minutes. Hmm. Cool that shit off. The microwave food, that shit already cooled off. That's what this particular so-called movement is today. It's microwave militancy. You ain't got no time in the kitchen. You ain't had enough heat on you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not knocking those who just coming along today. You might see this thing today, be like, look, I want to be an activist. I might want to start an organization, whatever. That's cool. Study. Research. Matter of fact, times are so serious right now, I wouldn't even suggest starting an organization. Find something that fits you. You don't have to join our organization because of the fact that I'm not on a recruitment tour. Right. I'm just saying that if you want to be involved in our people's liberation movement, then you have to get with some qualified folks. Don't let your ego control your ass. Because the ego will get your ass messed up. You understand what I'm saying? We Everybody want to look like the leader, the part. I had a brother say to me uh, yesterday from the UK, he said, um, he said, man, brother, I see you, you, you know what I'm saying? You've been very busy, so on and so forth. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, it's like this all the time. I said, well, you know, maybe it's the climate or whatever because of the fact that so many things are going on and folks are finally seeing, you know, some of the things we've been doing. He said, oh, man. He said, he said, but that's confusing. You do more work than this one and that one and that one and this one. And, and how come folks don't be here? You won't hear your name. And I told him, it's like the more popular you, you are, usually the less shit you did. <laughs> right. you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's, 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 it's a backwards dynamic but it's it's not i don't care if you scream my name from the mountaintop like 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 black thought said you can sky wrap my name or i could be anonymous mm -hmm. at the end of the day are we going to win or we not winning because even if everybody in the whole goddamn planet knew my name and everybody revered me and all that type of shit and we still losing what difference does it make I want to be the principal of the school that's failing. Or I want to be like Umar, be the be the principal of a non-existent school. <laughs> that's who we are. Black people in, in quote unquote militancy, we are Umar Johnson. We talk good, we sound good, but no production. That is a like Trump is 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 an example of white America. Umar is an example of black America. All style, no substance. You understand what I'm saying? So it has to be time out for that. Am I knocking him? No, I'm not knocking him. I'm telling you where the fuck we are. Right. I'm telling you that right now, you know, if, if, if there's a quote unquote civil war, we're not going to win. Why are we not going to win? Because we're not organized. Because we're too busy trying to figure out who somebody sleeping with, what somebody do, what kind of contact somebody got on, who did they nails, I don't like this motherfucker eyelashes, you know what I'm saying, this one don't wear these kind of shoes, he got Nikes on, he cursed too much, look man, you're in the battlefield, you ain't got time to be, you know what I'm saying, cats on the battlefield ain't looking to see what kind of uniform you wearing unless you're an enemy, they ain't like, man, you need to crease your jeans today, you getting shot at. Right. We we been murdered, we been railroaded, slaughtered, and have been, and, and still are. And yeah. our our priorities are everywhere but where they need to be. Right. That's How we gonna win the revolution? Right. How we gonna win? Right. That's the chat. That's that's it. That's it. And in a nutshell, it's like, yo, what are we doing? 
It's like, yo, where is where's your mind? And I think I feel like, you know, part of that 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 internal that internalized oppression, mm -hmm. that whole facet of our experience is what keeps us spiraling, you know, this toilet bowl of, you know, superficiality, right? Like, and, 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 and you know, it's like, I ain't got shit, so, you know, let me try to figure out how I'm better than this other motherfucker that ain't got shit. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah like, in the greater context of it, like, yo, know, what do you that's, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. It's, 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 you know, who got the flyest chains and the whips. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yo, I'm oppressed, but I look good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't got these. You ain't got these kind of shackles. Right. You know what I'm saying? My shackles is fly. They platinum. Right. You know what I mean? I'm with another slave. You know, right. there's no, you know, we, we're not, we don't understand where we are right now. And, and unfortunately, like most, most people, we don't realize where we headed till we get there. We been marched right up to the slaughter. We been shipped right to the slaughterhouse. And we didn't even listen to our intuit. We didn't even listen to our intuition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We too busy, like you said, we trying to prove that we better than the next, the next motherfucker loser. Right. You know. Right. right. So yo, so um, we got we on we what, what's your um I wanna give a quick give you a quick few minutes to just kind of like talk about strategy. Like mm -hmm. we said, we were gonna talk about how to organize the people army. Indeed, um, indeed, yeah. So, so in this in that context, like, what would you give, like, a, as a fifteen minute kind of like overview of how we strategize? You know what I mean? To uh, protect our community, a yes, right? Because that's only one facet. Like, protection is only one thing. Mm -hmm. B, how do we build? You know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. it's not enough to just protect. It's like we got to create, you know what I mean? That the, 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 the infrastructure and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. So, what, what, what are your thoughts on some on, on some moving forward solution yeah. and action? Okay, we start off saying Kwame Torre, organize, organize, organize. We have to organize. Like you said earlier, it's cool to mobilize. It's cool to get a million people here, a million people there. You know what I'm saying? It's cool to have these rallies. It's cool to have a big festival. It's cool to enjoy things. It's cool to be cool. Organizing is a new cool. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. But um, where do we go from there? Okay. The first thing is we need political education. Got to have political education because you got to understand what this fight is about. Some of us don't even know it's a fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have political education. You, that, that's, that's imperative. Without political education, you have absolutely nothing else. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how many guns you got. I don't care how many rappers you know. I don't care about how many knives you got, what project you grew up in, how many blocks you, you hood stood on, who you knew to shot who. None of that shit matters. At the end of the day, you have to have political education. And political education, I'm not talking about electoral politics. I'm talking about the politics of our liberation. I'm talking about understanding who our enemy is, where we need to go, and again, what this thing is about. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we have to have physical training. We got to work out. We got to train. You ain't going to be able to talk your way out this shit. You ain't gonna be able to joke your way out this shit. Gotta you ain't gonna be able to. Get your huh? endurance up. Say it again. <laughs> I said we gotta get our endurance up. You, you got, you got, man. You gotta get your endurance up. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? Because of the fact that we talking big shit. Some of these little old, little, little young ass cracker women, they train it. Some of these little white boys, they train it. You know what I'm saying? And they'll give you the business. Or you sitting there, because because for some reason, white black folks think white folks are scared of them. Not the case. I have no idea why they would think that, especially, <laughs> especially, 
you know what I'm saying? White folks know they ran us and they know they run us. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it don't matter how many pyramids you built. It don't matter, you know what I'm saying? Because really we ain't built shit our ancestors did. You know what I'm saying? It don't, it don't matter how tough we look. I, it, your, your Facebook page, your Instagram post, you marching with guns, none of that shit help. At the end of the day, you have to have your shit together. You got to have endurance. You got to have strength. You got to work out, learn a martial art. Malcolm said every black man should learn a martial art. Every black person. It was Malcolm. You know what I'm saying? So we got political education. You got that particular aspect with the physical training. Of course, you want to, you know, train with some folks who who can can help you to become sufficient in weapons training, firearms, knives, so on and so forth. We're in the South. You know what I'm saying? These white boys love their guns. It makes it easier for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, the gun laws are lax here. You're talking about we have a, 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 a law in the state of Georgia. We have what's called the Castle Doctrine. And the Castle Doctrine means that you can have a firearm in your car, in your home, or your place of business without a permit. You don't need a permit to go buy a gun. Now, some cats might be felons and so on and so forth. Get you a knife. Get you a machete. You know what I'm saying? Get a tool belt. Take your ass to Home Depot. Get a hammer. Get a nail gun. Get a motherfucking screwdriver. Them joints could be tools. You understand what I'm saying? You know, I wouldn't want to get shot by a nail gun. <laughs> with the machete. You know what I'm saying? So understand, you know what I mean? You, you have no excuse. If you can't do nothing but jog, jog. If you can't jog, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. Bunchy Carter said, you have to do something. He said, if you can't do nothing but spit, then motherfucker spit. You know what I'm saying? Part of my language is anybody has their children listening or whatever, you know, but of course America's a curse, so I'm sure that you ain't really tripping on me. Um, so from there, again, you want to join an organization because of the fact that anytime we're taken out is usually because we don't have any backing. Most of the people that tar are targeted, that are murdered outside of the, the quote unquote prominent organizers and so on and so forth are usually individuals who were by themselves. Ahmad, brought, Ahmad uh, Aubrey, he was, yeah, he was jogging through uh, the streets of Brunswick, Georgia, and these crackers approached him because he was by himself. If Ahmad Aubrey had two other brothers with him, we'd never know Ahmad Aubrey's name. Because these white boys are cowards. They're like hyenas. No one hyena is going to go fight a lion by himself. But they'll catch a lion that they think is weak. Five, six, seven of them will jump that line. And that's how it is with black folks. So you have to be a part of an organization. You got to have some structure. You got to have some discipline. You have to be able to listen to somebody other than your own self. So political education, physical training, join the organization. Now the organization has to be productive. You don't want to just join any organization. Yeah, see, what are their goals? What are they looking to do? Are they looking to just look good on social media? You know what I'm saying? Are they looking to just do events and concerts? Or are they looking to make change? What are they doing? What are their day-to-days? Is it proactive? Also, if you're talking about joining the organization, the organization should have some address. The people will back you once the people know where you are. I can't be an internet organizer. Motherfucker can't find you because of the fact that, you know, you just try to get likes you on social media. <laughs> How the community going to defend you if they don't even know you? They just know you from social media. You know what I mean? Our organization, uh, we have the Seattle Movement, and the Seattle Movement is a conglomerate, so to speak, of about nine different organizations, which include and not limited to the FTP Movement, the African Martial Arts Institute, the Urban Survival Preparedness Institute, Mama's Army, Community Movement Builders, Seattle Youth Corps, the National Coalition of Combat Police Terrorism, uh, Freedom Home Academy, and several others, right? We have gardens, like my brother manifests up there in Richmond. We have gardens here in Atlanta. We have properties, you know what I mean? We have a community house. 
We do anti-gentrification work. We do everything from anti-gentrification work to work on behalf of political prisoners. You know what I'm saying? We're training people in urban survival preparedness. We're on the anniversary of Katrina right now. You know what I mean? And one of the things that prompted us to get involved, my brother who co-chairs the Urban Survival Preparedness Institute with myself is Balogun Ojatade, who was the founder of the African Martial Arts Institute. But one of the things that prompted us to get deeper into the whole urban survival preparedness piece and form that particular network was Katrina and what went on in Haiti, but also police terrorism and things of that nature because of the fact that we know that urban survival preparedness is not just when a hurricane comes. It's how do you get from point A to point B? It's how do you deal with encounters with the police? Because the police are the number one terrorists in America. The police have killed more people in America than any one street organization. We always talk about black on black crime. White folks have killed more people during World War I and II, more white and others than any other period in the history of the world. Just Japan alone, they dropped an atomic bomb and murdered over 200,000 people in three days. They dropped one in Hiroshima and two days later, three days later, they dropped one in Nagasaki, killing over 210,000 people. This is what, what this ruthless ass nation that you want to be a representative of has done to people across the world. 210,000 people. That's a lot of people. Men, women, children, babies, cats, dogs, whatever. That's when people say, when people say, hey, you can reform this, I'd be like, bro, yeah. like, no, that is no reforming that. And, that. and then, like, when we say defunding the police, that's like, man, so are you going to defund the military? Right. Because the military is an extension of the police. Absolutely. You know I mean? yeah. It's the same. It's the operators one and the same. And if they could drop a, a, a megaton nuclear bomb that's right. on another country and, and justify it, no, I mean, what, shit, they could drop a bomb on the MOVE organization in Philadelphia on May 13, 1985. So they could drop a, a, a bomb on, on, on a community organization, on a house with women and children up in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? If they can do that, then they can do anything. They can do anything. They have no regards for humanity, for life as a, as, as a whole. Nice. The thing about Black people, most of us, we have some sense of love for life. It's rare that you just see black folks that just don't want to do nothing but kill and don't love nothing. Right. Che Guevara said revolution is an act of love. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. When we talk about all of this stuff from France Fanon to uh, uh, what's going on right now in the world, all of this is about love. I don't want y'all to get it twisted because sometimes some of you get scared and get scary acting and think that you know, oh man, they talking all this tough stuff, man. The police gonna kill such such. They gonna do such such. The military will do such such. Listen, we're here for a limited time. None of this shit lasts forever. And guess what? I'm sorry to burst your bubble again, but we all gotta leave sometime. There's gonna be a time we gotta go. So the thing is, as one of the OG said, I'd rather die like a man than live on my knees. I'd rather die like a man than live on my knees. George Jackson said, I will not be counted amongst the broken men. I will not be counted amongst the broken men. We have the opportunity, we have a unique opportunity right now, brothers and sisters. And it's an opportunity for us to unify on a serious level. Now, I don't know we in Facebook groups together and you like my shit. Not on I follow you. That's not a victory at all. I don't care about them taking down the Confederate flag. I'm more concerned with the American flag. The US flag is the most dangerous flag in the world. Most dangerous flag in the world. It's called blood, caused bloodshed all over the planet. 5% of the world population get control over 25% of the world's population, of the world's resources. 5% of the of world's population controlling over 25% of all resources on the planet. Before World War II, up until World War II, they control 50% of the resources on the planet. It's a little ass country. 5%. And you talking about Trump. This country was shit before Trump ever came in, came in office. This country produced Trumps. 
is the manufacturers of Trumps. It manufactures two things. It's greatest manufacturing uh, tools or, or, or equipment is to manufacture the, uh, uh, the nigger and to man, uh, uh, manufacture white supremacy. It's the two biggest commodities. The nigger, they have a, a nigger machine the nigga machine creates all the bullshit that we checking out right now. All the distractions. You know what I mean? Have us sit back arguing about insignificant shit. We really on social media just arguing about really, I mean, civil wars on social media. Motherfuckers can't even decide whether uh, R. Kelly was a, was a goddamn uh, pedophile. <laughs> they trying to defend Bill Cosby slipping pills in, 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 in women's drinks and shit. Well, she was white. That, you see how ugly she was? The fuck that guy doing anything? Rape is rape. I don't want nobody slipping nothing in my drink and slipping nothing in me either. So anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> boom, political education. Uh, get that political education, get that training, join an organization. Our organization, you can find out more about what it is we do at thepeoplesarmy.org, thepeoplesarmy.org. We have a podcast that I co-host called Renegade Culture. You can find that at renegadeculture.org or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We have a film, uh, Organizing is the New Cool. Organizing is the New Cool is a documentary that highlights uh, 14, 15 years of our work in the community. It also features a number of different founders of a number of different organizations. Uh, including RAM and the Panther Party and the BLA. We have a few folks who are, are culture workers from uh, the last poets to Stick from Dead Prez, Mary Barack, a little bit of everybody. These are, uh, this, is, this is footage of ours that we've collected, interviews, former political prisoners, our work, the track record, organizingthenewcool.com, you can find that. Um, yeah, but we appreciate you. I appreciate Brother Manifest. We back you, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm looking forward to bringing Happily Natural ATL back. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully when, when COVID gets on the right side of things, we can open Atlanta back up and, uh, and, and we have these things going. Ready. So, yeah, so I know it's two o'clock already. I hope that, um, you know, that, uh, that I, I gave you all something that, that we can walk with. Um, is there anything that I said that was inconsistent with... Uh, my actions, then, you know, I ask for your forgiveness. You know, for those of you who have been a part of our movement and a part of our organization and who have supported us throughout the years, we really appreciate you. I really appreciate you from my soul. You know what I mean? Um, for those of you that just wanted to check it out and you just said, look, I, I heard Happily Natural is doing this thing today. So let me see what this brother right here is talking about. I appreciate you as well. To those who just... Don't really fuck with me like that and just want to see what the hell that I was talking about. If I was saying anything that made some sense, <laughs> peace to you too for checking it out. Hopefully I won you over to something. You know what I'm saying? But regardless of any of that, we have to struggle together. You know what I'm saying? We are all we got. We're all we got. You have a choice. You can have me on your team or not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> It yeah. is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? You get with that. It's not. <laughs> yeah, you get with this, you get with that. We, we going to do. I mean, you know, shit. Don't hate me, motherfucker. I mean, shit. I ain't depressing. I'm trying I'm trying to I'm trying to win with you. Right. I'm trying to break the I'm trying to help you get your shackles off while I'm trying to get mine out. Figure we can do this together. But if you don't want to, then shit, you know, be oppressed by yourself. But in any event, thank you brother manifest for uh, all that you do. This is uh what is this 18 here? 18 years, brother. This brother right here has been doing Happily Natural for 18 years. And he's done it in multiple states with some great people. I met some great people throughout through this festival, brother. Really appreciate you, my man. Thank you, brother. And he, he about to be 40 with his old ass. Ta look, <laughs> about to be 40 out this bitch. I'm thankful for you people like you on my psych and my cypher man. Yes, sir. Who who who's uh been dedicated to this work, man. I appreciate you, man, from the core. 
you know, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, I can't thank you enough for just the opportunity to, you know, plug in yes. you know, to the Black August Organizing Committee. Yes. You know what I mean, to people like the Ruba. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just the whole FTP uh, yeah. clan, yeah. everybody that's been you yeah. know, in that mix. Ebony, Taj, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, Bakin, Balagoon, right. you know what I'm saying? The whole squad. Sarak. Yeah, know. Minister Server. Shout out to Server. Yeah, Methuselah. Yeah, yeah. Many yeah, people, yeah. man, that have. Yeah, Star, everybody. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I'm um I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next one, man. I appreciate the energy, you know what I mean, and um I'll be in touch, man. This has been amazing. Salute, um, brother. Hopefully, I didn't ramble too much, man. You know, I was in, no, on my no, zone. No, it was good. It was good. We needed we needed we needed to put some some of that uh some of them switches to the backside real quick. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Let's win, man. Let's win. Love y'all, man. We're gonna win, man. We got this. Ah ah ah. We gone. Peace, brother. Peace. Salute. Yo. So. You now tuned in to the uh, uh, 18th annual Happily Natural Day. Oh man, what are we doing? Where are we at? What is going on? Um, we just heard from Kalanji Jamashanga, uh, uh, co founder of the FCP movement based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, yeah, we're getting ready to go into our next 